Good morning, kids. Miss Dawn here. Today we're going to be reading about how even in the midst of really hard things like persecution happening to the church, that the word of Jesus continued to spread. So let's read Acts 8, 1 through 8 together. And there arose a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And the church was all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and sent them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. And the word of God continued to increase, and numbers of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So this passage started out with the church being persecuted. The word persecution means to be treated poorly for what you believe. And when they were treated poorly, how did the word about Jesus, did the word about Jesus stop? No, the Bible tells us that in this passage that it actually spread. They couldn't stop it. Have you ever told someone a secret and just didn't want anyone else to ever know, but it turned out that everyone knew? That's what it was like. They couldn't keep it to themselves. They were so excited about the word of Jesus and the miracles that they were seeing that they just kept sharing and sharing. One person told one person who told 10 people, who told 30 people, who told a thousand people. It just kept going. So if you think about the word scatter, it means that we scattered the word about Jesus everywhere. We couldn't help but tell. And just like the disciples who couldn't help but tell others, we can't help but tell others about what Jesus has done in our lives. So think about how the disciples were treated poorly. The face, the, in the face of that persecution, the gospel, the word about Jesus continued to spread. So for your own life, when you think about facing a hardship, maybe a friend who doesn't want to be your friend because you love Jesus, or maybe someone not wanting to um, go to church with you, when you think about that, what is your response? How do you think the disciples were able to keep sharing about Jesus when things were so bad? I think it's because they knew deep down in their heart that Jesus was the only way that they were going to have salvation, that they were going to have peace and joy in their hearts. He was the way to miracles, people being set free and healed. They believed in the truth of the word of God. So if you're facing hardship or people not loving you or, or rejecting you because of what you believe, remember what you truly know about Jesus and share that with everyone you know. Hey, Vintage Kids, it's me, Mr. Tyler. I wanted to uh, take time today to lead you in a song um, the words of the song are words that I did not write, um, but they come directly from the Bible. They come from Matthew specifically, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Um, so I'm going to read those words to you real quick. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. What I think is really cool about that scripture is, is it's, it's a, this huge command, this huge responsibility. We are asked by God, the, the creator, our savior, to go to the ends of the earth and share the gospel and, and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. That's a big responsibility. That's a big task that we're asked to do. But we can't forget the last part of that scripture, um, which gives us the strength and confidence to do that. And it says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Meaning when you go out into your schools, your neighborhoods, or uh, at Christmas or Easter or other family gatherings, um, 
you don't have to do so on your own. You have the promise that the Lord is with you always to the very ends of the age. He, he won't leave you. He won't forsake you. That strength and confidence can be found in him. So that's good news, and that's good news worth celebrating. But let's, uh, let, let, me, let me share this song with you. Um, I'll play it a few times so you can catch on. Hopefully by the end, it's something that you, you have a good, good understanding of, and you can go sing it to other folks and teach them. Um, hopefully it's fun. I think it is. So we'll, we'll do that now. So again, this is Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Here we go. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always until the end of the age. He's with us. them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I am with you always till the end of the
Stay.